Welcome to part three of animating Lancer Max with Pixel Over. In this tutorial, I'm just going to go over some of the extra things you can do and some of the other tools you can use. So first of all, what I'm going to do is we're going to have this body. The body and the legs are the same. So what we're going to do instead of separating them, we're going to add the bop with the deform tool. So going down to edit, what we need to do is we need to add new points to the kind of break points we want to add. So just have these slightly above, so we've got somewhere to select. And then we want to add this to the mesh. So we've got the default mesh, and then at the halfway point, we want to deform every single point except anything below those two ones we just made. And now when we play, the body will go up and down. Now the reason it's looking sort of like it's like, like it's a little, it looks a bit too organic with this way, but that is because of the resampling method. So this is what happens when you have it on fast rotate sprite. But if we switch it to none instead, what happens is it will just crunch that bit that we did. So then you get that kind of more, more sort of mechanic up and down. And so now what we want to do is we want to play around with these arms, the different ways you can control the arms. So the first thing we're going to do is for this arm, the sword arm, we're going to make it a child of the body. So whenever the body moves, the sword will, the sword arm will go with it and we'll make the actual sword hand a child of the arm. So when that moves, it moves with it like so. So then what we could do in this instance is we could just add a bone from here onto the body and then attach the arm to it. And then this way, we have a very simple, uh, the arm will follow the bone. And there's, you know, there's a good way of getting very a very simple movement going, especially if you've only got the one bone. And then we can add that zero position. Uh, we can have the arm again follow the body down. And then for a little bit of fun, we can just have it do a little like dip. Just as a, just as a basic animation. So for this other arm, uh, we could do the same when we will make it a child of the body. But in this case, I'm going to show you a little more extra detail about how to use the deform tool with it. So we give it a deform body and then we're going to go in and we're going to edit a bunch and we're going to go so every segment we're going to cut off with these points instead of cutting them up. So all of the points that we want to be able to twist and turn, we need to separate them. And then we can add a bone inside and then make that bone a parent of the next bone and then have the child bone be the hand here. So they see they go in sequential order. And you can see them here. So what this will mean, when we go back here, and we go to the bones tool, and we toggle all to select all these bones and do the auto thing, you see they all fill up. But when you use the auto tool like this, it will quite often do it in a way that you probably don't want. So in order to get this to look kind of correct, I'll show you what it looks like now. So if we pull this one, you can see it kind of twists over here and that's that's no good. We don't want that. So how we stop it doing that is we say everything above this segment should be controlled by only the red. And then only the segments in between the bones should be like partial. And there we go. So now when we move the arm, that's starting to look better. You can still see it affects it a little bit, 
but that's because of how the triangles are set up. So if you wanted to get something really like clean looking with this method, you would just need to go in and keep editing and keep reapplying the bones. So if you, whenever you change the deform, you need to reapply the bones. So you'd have to unselect them and reselect them again if you changed up uh, the deform points. But this way we can get it's very good for like slight movements if you do basic setup. Uh, so then if we take these back and we add all of these bones to the transform positions, we now can do a little thing where the top one goes down with the body, like everything else. It's a little disjointed, but you can just alter that through timings. And then have just a little, there you go, you have like a little movement and you can adjust the movement like that. You can even like do a big movement like that. And there you go, it's got a, got a little, it's got a little like interesting movement to it. But let's say we wanted a really weird looking, uh, slightly maybe more organic looking movement. And so that's why I've got this claw arm coming out the back. Let's say it's like a hacking arm or something. And how you would set that up is you could use the deform tool again, but these are already separated. So in this case, we're going to go onto the body and we're going to say we want this bit or this bottom bit, which is this. And then we want the extra bone. We want it like up here. And then we want the hand bone to be like up here. And then you can attach the different images to each of the different parts. Like so. So that when we, when we move one of these parts, you can see. Now, this will depend on the image you're using. So obviously this doesn't look correct because there's a big gap here. So if you're often doing like movements, especially with like weirdly shaped hands, you're going to need to like patch in some parts or make the movements very slight. So you can't really see that. And then of course, if you've got it behind one of the others, you need to fix that. So yeah, this isn't going to look correct, but this is just for testing purposes. Now let's say we wanted these bones to have a really funky movement with IK. And what we would do is we open up constraint down here. By default, it's set to pivot based on the parent, but we're going to inverse kinematics here. And for this, what all we have to do is create new and it will, it will immediately freak out. But what this does is it creates a new bone that the other bones will try to follow. And so you can control the whole arm with just this single bone. Now, depending on the arm shape, uh, this might not look that good. So in this example, you can see that this is obviously not quite looking correct. Uh, but you can alter the image and edit it around to get one. This is usually good. IK is usually better for more like normal looking arms. It's easier to do, but you can do all sorts of with it. So if I like just pivot this out here, because it will try to, you see it tries to kind of form a natural arm. So this like kind of weird shaped arm isn't, isn't the best suited for it, but it works. So then if I bring it to a sort of like, let's say like this is looks kind of default, put that at zero and then move it over here. You get a kind of more natural looking movement. So you can do, you can have some fun with that. So now that we've got something like a moving model, let's talk about some of the other tools we have available to us. Now, when this guy is bobbing up and down, there's a couple of places where it scrunches up. So here you can see that this line right down here is broken. And that can like, depending on your perfectionism, that might be unacceptable. Uh, so one way you could fix that is chopping up the model, making all the parts more defined, using even more deform points, 
but let's say we didn't want to do any of that. We wanted to use uh, a manual method within pixel over. So one of the options we have, and I find the best way to do it is add a new shader layer and it's completely blank. And we're going to put the shader layer above the mech shaders layer. I'm going to select it. And then we're going to select the drawing tool. And we're going to keyframe the drawing tool. So this is now keyframed. Here we go. So you can see it down here. And then like any sort of painting tool, we're going to grab some of the colors. We're going to come to this and we're going to see, oh, this is bad. And then we're literally just going to put the lines back and just do that. And then look at that. Now the reason we keyframed it is because that painting is then only applied to that keyframe. So if we come up here, we can see that it doesn't exist at the first slot, but then it appears here. And so you can kind of see it will still be there. You can see there's kind of these are like double black lines because it's still there. So obviously what you can do is you can copy the first frame and just duplicate it past it. And then well, just like magic, it's gone. And that is the very basics of the drawing tool. I would caution to only use the drawing tool in small amounts because there is some like display issues. Like if you use the cropping tool, like it looks invisible, but it has actually selected stuff. Um, so I would typically use the drawing tool to do like very small edits during an animation rather than anywhere else. So after we've finished our model and we're all very happy with it, uh, we want to, one thing we can do is we can add lighting to it through a depth map. And how we do that is you want to export it as a GIF first and then open up a new project, but on layer instead of 2D, have it 3D. When coming into the 3D, it comes with some default uh, setup. We want to change those. On 3D transform, we want all of these to be zero. On ambient, we want this to be white. And for directional light, we want that to be off. And then you go to the shader layer and you right click and you add a 3D object animated image. And he'll come in and it will ask to do all of the updates. It will come out a little wrong. Uh, so you want to change the resampling. And then you want to match the timings and the frames to the original image. So there's no difference. So there you go. So now our mech is on a 3D plane and we can even show this off by going to transform and rotating him. It's like, there you go. It looks like he's, but you know, he's a 3D object now. Restore that. And then to add the lighting, all we have to do is we have to go to an animated normal image, generate from animated image. And what this will do is it will generate a normal map of, of each frame. Uh, what I tend to do is I tend to change this to depth, uh, go to lighting, you, we've got some choices. This will be, we'll go for tune on this one, but I tend to use the others. And then you don't see any changes right now, but if we right click and add a new light source, you can see this spotlight source lights up the areas and you can even, it's hard to see because of it, but let me, if we increase it even higher, you can see that like whenever it hits these darker areas, it's using that depth math, that, that mask to see like, oh, this needs to, this is like some curved object. So there's, so there's shadow there. You can see it kind of working off there. You can even go in and adjust each of the frames, normal or depth images. I think that would be psycho, but you could do it. 
and then you can change this to like red and there you go we have like a, a slightly natural looking uh, glow and this is a good way to add like light glows to an animated image so while we're here this is a good opportunity to go over some of the other layer shader tools on the side here we've already gone over the indexing so in this case you uh, because of the red color light, uh, it's indexed the light color. So that's a, that's, a, that's a funky thing you can do if you want to play around with that. In this example though, I'm going to turn off the light and we're just going to get the grayscale. So we're back to the normal grayscale with a slight um, green texture. So we're going to just increase that so we get all of the colors. And then you can go to match indexing, okay, it comes with the same colors. Uh, and then what we can do is you could shift the colors. So you can swap the positions of the colors. This is quite fun to do for various things like this already has like an interesting glow about it. But the other thing you can do is you can go into manage and just manually change the color. Uh, so this is a, another way of you could add like interesting glows because it will replace whatever is in the index with that new color based on the match. So the other thing we can do with the shader layers now that we're in the 3D mode is we can add a clipping mask. And so to do that, we add a new 3D layer. Uh, we add our object to it. In this case, I'm going to add just this, just this simple, simple green line. So now that we've got this line, I'll show you what we can do with it. If we take the shader layer and we go to clipping mask and we say enable, and then we'll ask, what is this clipping? And we go this one. And as you can see, uh, one of the options is the, the shape will only, you know, what you've clipped will only appear in the shape of the mask, but you can also invert it to say only the bit that is outside the shape. So with that object though, you can obviously move it around. So as part of an animation, you can have this go around. This is also useful for if you have an item coming out of a character and you only want like part of it visible, you can make a clipping mask uh, to hide it. and. You can have it on a different layer. And there you go. There's some extra things you can do with Pixel Over.